Hi everyone, I'm Steve Stoller. And I'm Shauna Haley, and this is Inside Plano, where we take you behind the scenes of our city. We'll introduce you to the faces and places who help make this a great place to live. And give us lots of reasons to love Plano. Hi, Steve. Hello, Shauna. Welcome to summer. Oh, I'm excited that it's summer, and this episode is dropping on June 1st, and June is a very special month in Plano, as well. It is, well and I couldn't help but notice your Love Plano t-shirt. Yes, for those of you who are watching the video, you can see my lovely Love Plano t-shirt, and if you're interested, maybe drop me an email. We may or may not have a few of these hanging around the office, but the reason I'm wearing this shirt is because June is our birthday. Plano was incorporated on June 2nd, 1873. And so if I did my math correctly, that means it is our 146th birthday. Tell me, did you use the calculator? I did use the calculator. <laughs> Uh, you know, math was never my strong subject, and we could go into a long discussion about the <laughs> failures of my second grade teacher in uh, teaching me math, but, you know, calculators are on your phone, so... That's okay. Easy That's breezy. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's also the start of a summer favorite, Moonlight Mondays at the Tom Muhlenbeck Recreation Center. Every Monday night from 7 to 9, admission to the Muhlenbeck Outdoor Pool is just $2 per person, ages 3 and up. Well, and that is a lot of fun. They have the uh, splash pads, they have uh, slides, a lot of fun for your family. The other thing that also kicks off this summer, now that we're in June, is Play in the Park. It's held every Tuesday at Willow Creek Park from 9 to 10 a.m., totally free, and it's based on the idea that every kid should get 60 minutes of exercise every day. And unfortunately, all of the thumbs, you know, from your Xbox and your PlayStation, that doesn't count. So come join Parks and Recreation staff, uh, have some fun playing games that are organized, and just get out before the heat starts. Last month, we were talking about our Courtyard Texas music series. Yes. And uh, I had the pleasure of emceeing it. And Kevin Russell of the Shiny Ribs performed last you month. You love and him. He, he is something else. Mm -hmm. He is really something special. You know, I know that the uh, Austin City Music Awards, the Shiny Ribs won Best Soul Blues Funk Band. And this was a shorter version of the band. Usually they have eight people. This was him and the two background singers, just three people. But it was wonderful. It was such a wonderful show. He's is that really a, a classification of music? Soul, blues, soul, blues and funk. funk. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. He's got kind of a gravelly voice, but the thing about him is the way he moves on the stage, unlike anybody I've ever seen. This guy is a showman. So if Steve let, Andrews doesn't include that clip of you dancing, I'm going to be very unhappy. Well, I wasn't <laughs> dancing. <laughs> so the next in the series is June 6th at 7.30, and it's Tommy Alverson. Hmm. Tommy Alverson, if he's not a household word in Texas, you'll know so many of the people that he's performed with. Texas musicians like Willie Nelson, Johnny Bush, Johnny Gimble, Jerry Jeff Walker, Gary P. Nunn, Ray Wiley Hubbard, Stephen Fromholtz, as well as Robert Earl Keane, Pat Green, Charlie Robinson, singer-songwriter Jim Lauderdale. He's with Ed Burleson, who won a ro rodeo scholarship to Hill College in Hillsboro, and was there that he first started learning the guitar. While recovering from a knee injury, his love for playing country music grew. He first started playing at a newcomer's showcase at the Three Teardrops Tavern in Dallas. His 1999 album, My Perfect World, hit number four on the Americana charts. Sounds so good. another great concert. You know, these are not the big names, but they produce some incredible music. And they're almost always acoustics shows, correct? Yep. I mean, it's really uh -huh. a stripped down uh, environment and the courtyard is perfect for it's that. It's such a cool little venue to hear music. It really is. Absolutely. Well, one of my favorite events, uh, last year was its first year, so we're moving into the second year, Bark in the Park. It's June 8th from 8 to 10.30 a.m. at Jack Carter Park. Uh, you know, bring your favorite dog. I know you have... <laughs> <laughs> you have four, so pick your favorite one or your favorite four and come on out. I mean, it's it's a great event. There are a lot of vendors on site. Uh, classes will have a training schedule posted so that you can see what all is planned. A lot of fun. Uh, the music, doggone good time for everybody. And by the way, I'm super excited about this. Even though I don't have dogs, I just, I like the dog parks. It's fun to watch the dogs out and about. We have two more dog parks coming to Plano mm -hmm. and they all should be open by the end of the year. 
one on the west side at the new Windhaven Park and one on the east side at Bob Woodruff Park, plus the one in Central Plano at Jack Carter Park. So Bark in the Park, June 8th at Jack Carter Dog Park. You don't have dogs. Uh, would you like one or two? <laughs> or three or four? <laughs> I know. What, what our show audience doesn't realize is that Steve gave a trial run to a new little girl puppy and we all knew trial run meant she was moving in and she did. She arrived at the doorstep with her suitcases packed and said, hi, I'm home. So and four she's members. a sweetheart, <laughs> and now we have four instead of three. Well, that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> well, we also mentioned in last month's podcast that summer camp registration is underway. There are a couple that we don't want you to miss out on. First, there are a lot of one-week STEAM camps at the Muhlenbeck Rec Center from June 3rd to August 9th. Kids can experience science, technology, engineering, and math programs, including Lego We Do Robotics, the wonderful world of wizards, future vet, mad science, Minecraft Lego, superhero engineering, and more. All the things that I know you love, Shauna. Uh, you know what? I do. Um, I, you know, it, it's good to be geeky. And I mean, I mean, like <laughs> geek used to be a, a pejorative term, and now it just, you know, STEAM is, is the future. And a little later in the show, we'll be talking to Tammy Corns of Plano Public Library, and they certainly, some of their most popular items that are available for checkout are STEAM kits. So uh, Plano's doubling down on STEAM. But, you know, speaking of those summer camps, if you have slightly older kids, like um, 14 to 16 year olds, then you might want to consider sending them to the Teen Outreach and Adventure camp. Um, students would participate in various community service projects like working with the animal shelter, uh, the Plano Public Library, or some of our local food pantries. What's really great about this is not only is your kid busy <laughs> for a week and they're giving back to the community, but then they can also earn community service points for school. As you all know, we put all of this information in the show notes, so if you're looking for how do I sign up for these camps, uh, go to the show notes and we'll have a link there for you. And here's something really cool to be a part of. On June 20th, we are going to participate in the world's largest swimming lesson. You can join fellow residents from 8 to 9 a.m. at the Jack Carter Pool for a free swimming lesson. Now you'll be learning along with people from around the world hoping to establish a Guinness World Record. It's a lot of fun and a good way to brush up on the back to safety basics. Absolutely. And if you haven't uh, got a water watcher assigned in your family and you have young ones, that's something you might want to do. You can reach out to the Plano Fire Rescue Team and get your water watcher tag. Um, Speaking of uh, summertime, unless you're living under a rock in Plano, um, you probably know that we have a runoff election coming up in June. We have two seats on the Plano City Council that um, the, the results weren't established in the first elections. So the runoff election is Saturday, June 8th. Of course, there's early voting, so you'll want to check the show notes for that voting information. Um, then, during the June 10th City Council meeting, we'll swear in those final two members of the City Council. That's after the runoff is over. And I think, you know, we talked about voting in the last uh, podcast, and I did want to circle back to, like, how did we do in terms of people showing up to vote? About 12% of our registered voters showed up to vote in the last election. Now, you know, I got 12%, that's not a lot. It just depends on how you look at it. Is it as many as I would like to see vote? No, but considering that it wasn't a presidential election, it wasn't, um, it's, it's kind of an off season election cycle, um, we normally have five to 6% show up. So we had double the participation. Now runoffs typically have even a lower turnout. So we really encourage you Plano, if you, live in Plano and you're registered to vote, and I've told you before, 94% of you are <laughs> registered to vote, please show up and, and vote. Um, so important. Yes, you know, and we've talked about it before. Uh, what happens at your city level is really what impacts your life the most. So show your love for Plano. I'm pointing at my t-shirt again. Show your love for Plano by showing up to vote for that runoff election. Summer is also a great time to get outside in your yard, and it's also a great time to fix up the neighborhood. So the deadline is approaching to apply for the Neighborhood Vitality and Beautification Grants. You'll need to submit your pre-application by July 1st. Full application is due August 1st. The grant amounts vary based on neighborhood membership type. They can go up to $10,000. It's incredible. usually a match. So the neighborhood has to put in a little money too. 
So the goal is to support vibrant and renewing neighborhoods through community-driven beautification projects. The guidelines are in the show notes, but I want to tell you a little bit about them because I think these are really, really cool. So the neighborhood puts in some money and then the grant covers the rest. Once again, up to $10,000 in matching grant funds. Homeowners associations, neighborhood associations, crime watch groups are all eligible to apply if they meet the criteria. Now, a few examples of these beautification mm -hmm. projects. There's medium improvements the neighborhoods can do, landscaping or signage at the entryway to the neighborhood, lighting improvements. It's a win, win, win situation <laughs> because it makes the neighborhood look better. It increases pride and neighborhood identity, and it increases community building and participation among the residents who live in the community. So it's a great thing. I would urge all communities, if you want to spruce up your neighborhood and you got a little tiny bit of money to spend, get one of these grants and you can really beautify your neighborhood. Oh, that's, you know, that is a great program. A lot of our neighborhoods are aging. I mean, Plano's not a young spring chicken. Remember, it's our 146th birthday. Not all of our neighborhoods are that old, but certainly, you know, we're talking anywhere from 25 to 60 years old. It might be time to just do a little a little sprucing here and there. You know, speaking of getting involved with your neighbors, June 6th is the next Neighbors Connect workshop. It's going to be 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Environmental Education Center. That's down on the south central side of town, kind of close to the Plano Animal Shelter. Now, the workshop series connects residents to subject matter experts, and I'm actually really excited about this one, Steve. They are bringing in Robbie Turner, who is the Nextdoor Public, uh, Public Agency Partnership Lead. Try to say that three times fast. <laughs> <laughs> but really, it, Robbie's job is to explain how neighborhoods can use Nextdoor to build a stronger, more connected neighborhood. I mean, what a great opportunity to hear from uh, the source themselves. Now, I am pretty sure, even as we're talking about this on the podcast, that all seats are going to be taken um, and spoken for because they try to keep these workshops pretty small. But the reason I wanted to talk about it on the podcast today is, one, so that you know that Neighborhood Services puts together some really great workshops, and this is an example of it. And two, um, our team, uh, we're going to send our Plano television crew out to record it, so this will be available as a webinar as well. So make sure that you sign up for the Building um, Best Neighborhoods newsletter, and that uh, link to the webinar will be going out. And you might want to check and see if there's still seats available at the workshop. You know, anyone who uses Nextdoor in Plano knows who Officer David Tilly is. Yes. He's our public information officer for the police department. He, he puts helpful posts on there on a daily basis. And you know, the police department has a victim services unit and they do some really great workshops mm -hmm. during the course of the year. So on June 14th, from 9.30 to 11, when it's called When the Unthinkable Happens, June 14th at the Davis Library. Being a victim of a crime can be very overwhelming and frightening. Many people don't realize the services and resources that are available to them to help them navigate this difficult time. So join us as the Plano Police Victim Advocates discuss how we can assist victims and families after a crime. We'll discuss the impact of victimization, victims' rights, and local assistance that's available to victims. Very important. Yeah, that's great. And you know, they're doing a follow-up workshop on uh, June 21st from 9.30 to 11. It'll also be at Davis Library. Um, that workshop, by the way, a lot of people don't realize that at Davis Library we have a police substation, so that's a very convenient place. Um, and there's also a, a court outpost, so if you need to pay a ticket, you know, you can do that at Davis Library. But anyway, uh, the June 21st workshop is called What's That App? Studies show that children between the ages of 8 and 18 spend an average of, you won't believe this, Steve, seven and a half hours a day in front of some type of screen, you know, whether that's the phone or the TV, and that's, that's a horrific stat. Um, so this class is going to discuss some of the most popular applications that are used by children and young teenagers and educate parents on how those kids can have some healthier device use. This is also presented by the Plano Police Department Victim Services Unit. Our special guest today on Inside Plano is Tammy Corns. Welcome, Tammy. Thank you very much. I guess much. we should tell everyone who you are and what you do. <laughs> who I am and Tammy what I do. Tammy is the Community Outreach Manager for Plano Public Library. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. 
Thanks, we Jim. always love to start the interview by asking our, our beloved colleagues, what is it something about themselves that most people don't know? Well, let's see. Something that people may not know is that I grew up in Hawaii. So a little bit different from the time I was two. And one of the things that I'll admit now that my mother doesn't know to this day is that I used to intentionally miss the bus in elementary school so that I could walk to the library, the public library around the corner mm -hmm. and hang out there. And I would walk home if I had to so that I could go and do that. So you've been a lover of libraries ever since childhood. I have. It's one of my favorite places to be. And that explains what you do today. So your long title is Plano Public Library Development and Community Outreach Manager. What does that mean in terms of what you do with our library system? What that means is we have a team, I lead a team of seven that focus on sharing what the library has to offer with our community. Uh, we do outreach, all forms of communication, so everything that we're sharing on an external basis, uh, our website, social media, print uh, communication, outreach, we look for grants and outside funders, we work with partners, anything where we can engage with the community and share more of the information about what's available to people is what our team does. Every week we send out a list of activities at the library. And it always amazes me, just in one week's time, how many things are going on there. This is June coming up, and this is a busy time of year. Uh, talk about some of the things that are going on in terms of activities at our libraries during the summer. Well, one of the things we look at Plano Public Library as being a community educator. So a large part of the summer focus is on summer learning and offering things to families so that they can learn together. One of the things we're doing this summer is celebrating the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, which some of us are actually old enough to have been and uh, watched on television. And we're doing some things that relate to space. So uh, we're having space-related programs that include space art for preschoolers, do-it-yourself UFO design and flight competition for families, and virtual reality painting and space exploration for adults, to name some of the hundreds of programs that are going on this summer. Yeah, that's really cool. I actually remember watching the moon landing with my father. Mm -hmm. And that was one of those things that you'll never forget for as mm -hmm. long as you live. One of those moments in time. Uh, let's go back to your, your main day-to-day -day activities. So how do partnerships enhance the library's services and programs? Well, some of the partners we look at trying to bring things into the library that we wouldn't otherwise be able to afford with the library budget. So we have a lot of things, a lot of partners that add value to us. We have a group that has been coming in for years doing college prep classes like SAT and ACT. We have a group that does ESL classes, uh, citizenship. We've partnered recently with the Federal Reserve Bank who, did, who trained our staff to present financial literacy. We're working with a group, child care group, that is a, a local social service organization that works on early learning with families and they tell their families about the library, they bring them to the library, they provide um, interactive workshops for uh, patrons. There's there are groups that do tax help, AARP does volunteer tax help for people. Uh, and then Family Place is another big partnership that we have going on at Harrington Library where it's uh, kind of an interaction where parents bring their kids and they do one-on-one -on -one interaction with child care or with um, child development specialists. And we are actually opening a new one in the fall, another Family Place library at Schimmelfinnig. So we'll have Harrington and Schimmelfinnig both. Wonderful. There are five library locations that are spread throughout Plano. Why do you do outreach into the community? One of the biggest things is dispelling that myth of what the library is. So many people, their memory of what a library is is absolutely not what we are today. They remember the books and think, oh, I haven't been to a library in years. I, I order books from Amazon or do whatever. And when we, when we go out in the community and show them that the library is now about STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, robotics, different types of learning, they're shocked. The, one, the biggest thing we hear from people is, I had no idea. So that's the, one of the biggest reasons is to go out and bring people back to the library to see what we are. 
Another big thing that we see, obviously reaching people where they are, there are people out in the community that don't have the facility, don't have the ability to get to a library and trying to reach them. In addition, there are new residents to Plano that have come from countries where the library is very different, where the library may not be free and may not have what we have. So that's a great opportunity for us to reach them and, and showcase what's, what's here in Plano. I know one uh, slogan, if you will, that I hear often is more than books. I know we have the more than books outreach van which we acquired recently. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, the van is awesome. We call it Big Blue at the library. <laughs> it's more, it's the, the name of the van is hashtag more than books and it was funded by our friends of the Plano Public Library organization. We got it last June, so it's been just about a year that we've had it in service. And the van is not a bookmobile at all. We don't take out books, but what we do take out is all of our other non-book resources to show people. So we can go and teach classes. We've had a lot of classes recently with some organizations on the east side of Plano on digital literacy. People may not realize that there are citizens out there who don't know how to use a mouse, don't know how to use a computer, and need to learn how to use email or maybe upload a job, you know, job application or resume. We do classes, we'll go out to a lot of festivals, um, anywhere really where we can connect with people and we demonstrate what the library has. The van is awesome, it's, it's big, it's plain, painted blue, it's, it's um, got an awning, it's got a TV on the side so we can showcase a lot of our digital resources while people are standing there. And the best part, it has a bubble machine. So bubbles can shoot out the side of the van, which draws children and families over to the van. You gotta have a bubble machine. You gotta machine. have bubbles, they're the best <laughs> thing ever. Tammy, I noticed on the library website, it, it talks about how the system uses volunteers to meet community needs in a budget-friendly way. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Using volunteers allows us to do so much that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise. We have standard uh, people that come continually throughout the year to do everything from shelving to mending books to helping crowd control. We have a really robust teen volunteer program during the summer where teens come and they'll help facilitate the programs that we have going on since we have hundreds of programs going on during the summer. And then we've really focused recently on corporate volunteers. And so we have corporate groups. Recently we had Bank of America and United Healthcare come in and help facilitate a program called Math Mania where families came in together and it was really about making math fun for kids. And those corporate volunteers come in and help facilitate those programs. So it allows us to do a lot more than we would be able to do with just our staff. Sticking with the theme of more than books, can you share with us a story of how a patron's life was impacted in a practical way by using our libraries? I, we would be here for days if I shared all of the impact stories that we've heard. We hear from people who come in and have not had success uh, trying to get a job. For a lot of people, applying for a job used to be you walked in and filled out a paper application and now you've got to do it online. So we hear from a lot of people that are coming to the library to use that. We recently had a family of five who uh, came here from Ethiopia and all of them came in together to get individual library cards so that they could sign up accounts on our online language learning database, Pronunciator. So all of them did that and now they're, they're uh, learning English. We also recently had a grandmother uh, who is deaf who brought her grandson to our uh, sign language story time because she's trying to teach him, get him going on, on sign language so that they can communicate together. So there are hundreds of meaningful stories that people share. Tammy, I've heard the number before, um, hopefully you know what the number is, of how many people visit the library during a year. It's an astronomical number. It's, if it translates, that's about 1.5 million. And when you look at that, it's more than 4,200 people a day visiting the five Plano libraries. And they check out more than 11,000 items every day. So if you're looking for more than books, give our libraries a visit. Uh, Tammy Corns, our Community Outreach Manager for the Public Library System in Plano, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. That was a great interview with Tammy. You know, it, it, people who are watching the video, they, they may know this or may not know this. Tammy doesn't like to be in front of the camera. She classifies herself as a behind the scenes person. Offices in the basement of Haggard, in case you didn't know that there was a basement at Haggard Library, but it's, 
she is a great person and the work that she does uh, for Plano Public Library is just really incredible building these strong partnerships between the business community and the city. We love our libraries and yeah. the people in Plano love their libraries as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, we briefly talked about summer learning mm -hmm. and that's actually my one thing for this podcast today. This episode drops on June 1st and that's also the kickoff for summer learning. There's a ton for families to do from filmmaking classes to celebrations around the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, which you mentioned, Shauna, to money management classes, to a ton of ebooks and audiobooks to enjoy while you're on vacation. Oh, yeah. Well, I have some vacations coming up this summer, so you can bet that I'm going to be checking some stuff out before we go. Now, Steve, did you know we are now getting listener mail from uh, listeners of the Inside Plano podcast? And it wasn't my mother? It wasn't your mother, and it wasn't my husband. So we actually have, you know, a lot of people have, have joined you all in listening to the show. And this month, I just had this record number. By record number, I'm not talking like hundreds, but it was more than one email coming in. So I thought it might be kind of fun to dig into our listener mail bag or Shauna's email inbox, whatever you want to call it, and pull out a question that we yeah, had and answer that's exciting. That. Yeah, okay, so this shout out is for Ofer, and who is working through our past episodes. This started with episode one, so from clear back last year, um, and is working his way up. So in episode eight, uh, if you remember, Steve, we talked to Ryan Delzo, mm -hmm. um, and he was talking about trash and recycling, and that is actually the reason that Ofer emailed. His question was, what collection options are there for Plano residents that are living in apartments if they have things like propane cylinders and fire extinguishers that they want to recycle? And what a great question. You'd think that would be a simple answer. And it really wasn't a simple answer at all because those are what we call household hazardous waste. And so if you live in a single family home, um, you have residential waste service that comes through. You have to call and arrange for a special collection of those items. It's not like you you are strongly discouraged from throwing those in the trash can because they need to be disposed of a, a separate way to keep um, hazards out of the landfill. Well, an apartment complex is actually a commercial unit, so it's, it's not treated the same way as a single family. So your question, Ofer, actually caused our trash and recycling team to do a lot of digging and a lot of research to answer the question. Now, it's not simple, but here's some options. So first, um, the easiest way, but it, the burden is on the management company uh, for your apartment complex, they can contract with an outside provider to do a special collection service. So that's not necessarily an expensive thing, but it's something that the management team would need to do and they would come and do a one-time collection so several of the apartment residents could bring their hazardous waste at that time. The logic behind all of this is that typically if you're living in an apartment, you're probably not painting and changing the oil in your car and all of those things quite as often as you might be if you're in a, in a single family home. Another option for you is that you can take these to the Dallas County Home Collection Center, but I want to make sure that people know there's a fee for collecting because obviously we're not in Dallas County. We're in Collin County, small portions in Denton County, so Dallas charges for that service. Specifically though, propane tanks. That, those are kind of interesting because depending on where you got your propane tank, they may take them back to recycle. And a good example of that is Blue Rhino. And they're pretty common at a lot of grocery stores. You see the Blue Rhino outside. Blue Rhino will actually accept those back um, and they'll take them to recycle. You just have to mark them recycle. So it, it does take a, a bit of digging and it's not quite as easy as a, a single family home. We understand that, but that's the answer. So. Please keep emailing in with questions. We love them. Some of the home improvement stores um, where you can get a refill will take any type of propane okay, tank. Perfect. Yeah, it doesn't matter what brand it is. They'll take it and they'll give you one to take home on a rental basis. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, um, I lived in an apartment in Plano, my husband and I, for almost 10 years before we bought our house. And we had a lot of friends who lived in homes in Plano. So you know, depending on your situation, you may have friends who are homeowners and it's worth also calling them and saying, hey, if, would you mind calling and doing a special collection and drop your stuff off at their house and have it recycled that way. So there are ways to work around it, even though at this time the city of Plano doesn't do collections at um, apartment complexes. Mm -hmm. So um, 
you know, talking about Bark in the Park <laughs> earlier uh, reminds me that back in episode five, and I don't know, I'm like really digging in the vault today, well, you and I talked about dog-friendly patios because we had just started um, having our health department go out and certify that dogs could be on certain patios. And there are all kinds of requirements that restaurants need to do to make sure that you're not getting dog hair in your food and all kinds of things. But it is summer. And summer, for at least two and a half minutes, is patio season in Plano. Where are your favorite places to hang out? Well, the, the two that I'm thinking of that I enjoy that allow, that are pet friendly, are uh, Katy Trail Ice House mm -hmm. on Park Boulevard, and then out by 121 in Preston, the Lazy Dog. Mm. That's, that's a fun place. It's a really nice outdoor area, and a lot of people bring their dogs. And even in the summertime when it's real hot, they have cooling systems out there. You know, the mist that they blow on you to cool the temperature. It, it, but it's so cool you know, to dine and to relax and to have your dog with you. Do you guys typically take your dogs out when you go to patios or are you patio, patio and the dogs stay at home and they can chill in the backyard? Yeah, we usually leave them at home. It's, that's not a common thing for us, but it's still a lot of fun to see the people with their dogs. Sure, well, I'm a, I'm a patio person in the summer, although as a, a redhead, fair skin, I'm a covered patio kind of person, so personally, we haven't yet certified any cat-friendly patios. I probably need to talk to the health department about that. But I love to go out to the boardwalk. That's like my favorite patio dining mm -hmm. area in all of Plano because you can, there are a ton of good restaurants there. I do have a favorite that probably 99% of the time you're gonna find me on that particular restaurant's patio. We're, we're just big fans. But you can sit and watch people walking on the boardwalk. There are, all kinds of games sitting out. Uh, it's just really, really nice. Plus you have the little pond and it feels like a whole different place. And are most of the restaurants at Boardwalk, are they animal friendly? I don't think any of them that I'm aware are actually dog friendly patios, but they are people friendly. You know, and a lot of them have fire pits out there. So I mean, it's just not that you want to sit by a fire when it's 100 degrees in the summertime, but it's just a nice place to go and chill out. And if I'm not doing that, then you know, Senor Locos or some of those other kinds of good Tex-Mex patios. It's just, it's the way to say summertime in Texas. That's why we all move down here, right? Yeah, definitely. Well, a lot of good outdoor patios. For sure. Well, you know, today is like the last day that the weather is nice before bad weather rolls back through. And so I think, you know, it might be something that we think about going and dining al fresco for lunch because when we talk about food and places to eat, that means what, Steve? We're at the end of the podcast, right? That you, you do, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and it also means our stomachs start growling. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, just like Ofer, we would love if you would send in your email with questions um, and comments to askplano at plano.gov. We'll link to that in the show notes. And we always ask that you leave us a review because it helps other people find our show and learn more about all of the reasons that we love Plano. So thanks, everyone. Have a great June. Goodbye, everybody. See you next month. And that's it for our Inside Plano. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did doing it. If you have any comments or suggestions, send them to us at askplano at plano.gov. Bye. Talk to you next month. The Inside Plano podcast is brought to you by the City of Plano and 97.5 KLAK.